Okay, I think we can start. Uh, welcome to everyone present at this session. Uh, please mute your microphone. Uh, as you may know, the first talk entitled Absorption of Massless Scalar Waves by Ion Beto Garcia Regular Black Holes by Marco Du Paola. I ask Marco to turn on video and share his screen, okay? Can you see my screen? Yes, that's great. Bye. Okay, you Please, Marco, you can start. Right. So, hello, everyone. My name is Marco Aurelio, and I'm a PhD student of the graduate program in physics from Federal University of Pará, Brazil. And today I'm going to talk about the absorption of massless scalar waves by a young Beato Garcia regular black holes, which, was, which is a work that was done in collaboration with Luis Leitch and Luis Crispino. So this is the outline of, of this talk. I will start with uh, a brief introduction about general relativity and nonlinear electrodynamics. Then I will discuss the main features of the Ion Beato Garcia regular black hole space time. Next, we study the propagation of massless testicular fields in this background. And finally, we present our main results concerning uh, the, absor the absorption properties of the ABG solution. So let's start with the introduction. In 1915, Albert Einstein published the general relativity, which is essentially a geometric theory of gravity that has passed successfully to several experimental tests along the last hundred years. One of the most interesting predictions of GR are the existence of black hole solutions, which are regions or which are objects characterized by an event horizon, which is a non-returned surface. However, in standard general relativity, um, black hole solutions have predicts the existence of intrinsic singularities at, at the core of the solutions. And, and at these regions, the physical quantities plus such as density and geometric quantities like the Riemann tensor diverge. An attempt to circumvent the singularities issues are the so-called regular black hole solutions. The first model of a regular black hole was proposed in 19, 1968 by James Bardeen. However, this model was a toy model in the sense that, at least at the time, there is no source associated with the modifications uh, uh, um, presented by the Bardeen solution. So only 30 years later, in, in 1998, a young Beato and Garcia published the first exact model of a regular black hole based on the minimal coupling between nonlinear electrodynamics and general relativity. This theory, the nonlinear electrodynamics, is basically uh, 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 an attempt to generalize Maxwell's theory for strong electromagnetic fields. In 2014, Caio Macedo and Luis Crispino studied the absorption of test mass massless test scalar fields in the background of the Bardeen solution. One of the most interesting results was the possibility of the Bardeen solution mimic the absorption properties of the Eisen-Austin solution in the high for, for intermediates to high values of the frequency. Last, last year in this work, we studied the absorption prop the, 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 the absorption cross section of the Ion Beato Garcia regular black hole, and we obtained that. It is possible to ABG and uh, eisen austin black hole solutions have the same uh, absorption properties in the whole frequency regime. And the entire work, the entire presentation is about uh, this result. So let's start now uh, talking about the, the, the main features of the ABG uh, space time. So the line element of this geometry is given by equation one which is a static and spherically symmetric line element with the metric function given by equation two, where M and Q 
are the mass and the electric charge of the central object. Besides that, the AG solution behaves as a deceiver uh, geometry as, as, as R, R tends to zero, as shown, as shown by equation 3A. And this behavior at the core of the solution is responsible to regularize the center of the solution. And at infinity, as shown in equation 3B, the AG solution behaves as a Heisenhausen also solution because the nonlinear electrodynamic model proposed by ABG, by, by Eun, Beat, and Gar Garcia, satisfies the weak field limit. So the ABG solution describes regular black holes when the modeling of Q is less or equal than QX, where QX is the extreme charge value and, and it is given by, by 0.66341M. So for model of a Q bigger than QX, we have horizon solutions. And for Q equals to QX, we have the so-called extreme ABG regular black hole. And for Q less than QX, you have two horizons and their location are given by equation four, where S is defined as this, this, this expression here. And the equations five to seven are auxiliary functions. So uh, we know that moving now for, for the absorption, for, for, for the absorption, for, for the propagation of mass testicular fields in the background of curved space times, we know that this propagation is governed by the Klein Klein equation given by equation A in the background of curved space times, where phi is the field. And considering the symmetries of the, the, the space time under consideration, we can decompose this field as given by equation nine, where C omega L are constant coefficients that will be determined by the boundary conditions and omega and L are the frequency and the angular momentum of the scalar wave. Here, this psi uh, is the, the radial function and P is the, corresponds to the Legend polynomials. So by inserting equation nine into equation eight, we may find a radial equation given by equation 10, where R star is the, is the red Euler coordinate and V is the effective potential given by equation 11. Uh, so uh, in figure one, we plot the, 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 the effective potential for the AMG regular black hole considering two distinct scenarios. In the left panel, we consider different, different choices uh, of L with alpha equals 0 0.5, where alpha is a parameter given by the ratio between the electric charge and the extreme charge value. This kind of definition called by normalized electric charge helps us to compare results for different geometries. So in, in the right panel, we consider L equals zero and different values of alpha. We note that the peak of the effective potential increases as you increase the values of L and alpha, which means that uh, massless testicular waves are subjected to higher potential behaviors for higher charged AG regular black holes. And we also observed that the effective potential goes to zero at the asymptotic regions, namely at the horizon and at infinity. Due to this behavior of the effective potential, it is possible to find asymptotic solutions for, for, for the radial function. And these solutions are given by equation 12, where T and R are complex coefficients that satisfies the conservation of the flux given by this exp expression here. Um, in equation 12, uh, the set of solutions given by equation 12 are the so-called uh, the so-called emodes, they correspond to a wave that is coming from infinity, infinity towards the black hole that when interacts with the effective potential is partially reflect back to infinity and partially transmitted into the, into the black hole. So the total absorption cross-section is defined as given by this expression here, that, that is by the ratio between the total flux of the field and the current of the instant planar wave. 
By applying the partial wave method, we can rewrite the total absorption cross-section as a sum of partial wave contributions as given by this expression here, where sigma L corresponds to the partial absorption cross-sections and they are given by equation 14. We know that uh, there are some generic results for the absorption of massless testicular fluids in the background of, of, of stationary static of spherically symmetric space times. For instance, at the zero frequency regime, it has been shown that the total absorption cross section in this case tends to the black hole area as given by equation 15. And we can approximate the oscillatory profile of the total absorption cross section in the high frequency regime by using the so called sync approximation given by equation 16, where sigma g is the geometric cross section given by this expression where BC is a curie compact parameter. Sync is a function defined as given by this, this term here. And capital lambda is the Lyapunov exponent. So now we can, uh, uh, now we can present our main results concerning the absorption of massless testicular fields in the background of the ABG space time. First of all, it is interesting to start by comparing our numerical results with the analytic approximations for the low and high frequency regime. So first, let's start with the low frequency regime. In figure one, figure, sorry, in figure two, we plot the total absorption cross-section absorption cross of the scalar field with L equals zero for distinct choices of alpha. And we can see that the ratio between uh, the total absorption cross-section and the black hole area as omega tends to zero tends to unity, which means that our numerical results are consistent with what we expect, what we expect in the low frequency regime. In figure three, we plot the eventualized area of ABG, Bargin, and Heisenhausen black holes as a function of the normalized electric charge. We know that for the same choices of alpha, the black hole areas of ABG and Heisenhausen black holes are very similar, but both are smaller, smaller than the corresponding Bargin case. So this means that the ABG and the Heisenhausen black holes may be not be distinguishable from the perspective of the black hole area. So now let's consider the high frequency regime. In figure four, we compare the total absorption cross-section with the geometric cross-section, which are these uh, 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 dot-dashed black lines here. And in figure five, we consider not the, the geometric cross-section, but now the sync approximation. We see that the total absorption cross-section typically oscillates around the, the geometric cross-section and the sync approximation provides an excellent approximation for the total absorption cross-section for intermediate for uh, up to high values of the frequency. Combining these results with the results presented before, uh, we conclude that our numerical results are consistent with what we expect from the analytic approximations in the low and high frequency regime. So now let's analyze the total absorption cross-section uh, the main features of the total absorption cross-section. And we start by, by, by as I show in figure six, six, showing the total absorption cross-section of the ABG regular black hole for distinct choices of alpha. We know that as we increase the values of alpha, the total absorption cross-section decreases. This is related with the behavior of the effective potential. As shown earlier, uh, massless test particles are subjected to a higher potential barriers for higher AG regular black holes. Consequently, the, this base scale of field will be more absorbed in the background of low charged AG regular black holes. In figure seven, we, we show the, the, the examples, some examples of the partial absorption cross section of the AG regular black hole for different values of L and alpha. And we know that, we, and we see that for, that as increase the values of alpha, the, partial, the peak of the partial absorption cross-section decreases. And as increase the values of L, the, 
the, the, the bunch of social transaction decree also decreases. Besides that, in the low frequency regime as omega tends to zero, the poor absorption cross, uh, the main contributions for the poor absorption cross section come from the mode L equals zero. So uh, in this regime, the total absorption cross section can be uh, approximately given by the first contribution of the, 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 the partial absorption cross section. So in figure eight, we compare the partial absorption cross sections of the ADG and Heisenhausen black holes for different values of L with alpha equals 0 0.3 in the left panel and alpha equals 0 0.9 in the right panel. So in the left panel, we can see that for low values of alpha, the partial absorption cross sections are very similar. But as you increase the values of alpha, the partial absorption cross section of the ABG regular black hole is bigger, is typically bigger than the coins for the one for the highs and also case, the, the peak in this case. So when we so if you look at the, the total absorption cross sections, we observe a similar profile because as shown in figure nine, in the left panel, we consider the total absorption cross sections of these in the background of these geometries for low values of alpha. And in the right panel, we consider uh, high values of alpha, in this case, alpha equals 0 0.8. So we see that for low values of alpha, the total absorption cross sections of ABG and Heisenhausen black holes are very similar. But as you increase the values of alpha, the, the total absorption cross section of the ABG regular black hole is typically bigger than the corresponding one for the Heisenhausen case. So these, re these results shows, uh, show that it is possible to regular black holes mimic the absorption properties of standard black holes in the whole frequency regime. To better understand that, let us uh, proceed as follows. We can compute the values of the normalized charges for which the geometric cross-sections of ABG and Heisenhausen black holes are equal, as shown in figure 10. And we can find this, this equality up to, uh, uh, for alpha in the Heisenhausen case, up to 0 0.9161. So once, once that we have these pairs here, we can compute the total absorption cross section. So by doing this as shown in figure 11, we know that for low, we see that for low to moderate values of alpha, the total absorption cross sections of ABG and Heisenhausen black holes are indeed very similar in the whole frequency regime. So this again reinforces the, 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 the possibility of a regular black holes mimic the absorption properties of the standard black holes. So now moving to, to, to the conclusions, we computed the absorption of massive scalar waves in the background of, of ABG regular black holes. Our numerical results for the absorption cross section agree very well with analytic approximations. The ABG regular black hole total absorption cross section diminishes as you increase alpha, which is the normalized electric charge. Typically, the total absorption cross section of the ABG regular black hole is bigger than the Heisenhausen one for the same choices of alpha. However, it is possible to find configuration for which the total absorption cross sections are, are very similar. The geometric cross section of the ABG and Heisenhausen black holes may be equal for alpha in the Heisenhausen case, less or equal to approximately 0 0.9161. And we may not necessarily distinguish an ABG regular black hole from a Heisenhausen black hole, giving two, two perspectives, the perspective of the black hole area and the perspective of the absorption of massless test scalar fields. So that's all. Thank you all for your attention. Okay, thank you, Marco, for your nice presentation. Uh, any question, please raise your hand at the bottom of the page, and tap the reaction and raise your hand for possible question. Any question? No question. I have one. 
Ok. Uh, dear Marco, uh, comparing the cross section of the regular black hole uh, with rise and rise from black hole, you showed that they are very similar in the whole uh, frequency regime. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Uh, what I, I I'm afraid uh, the rule of singularity in your calculations uh, uh, more clearly uh, is it expected the same result for right and order from black hole or ion B2 and Garcia uh, because the boundary of your calculation are from the event horizon to infinity. Yes. Am I right? So the singularity and the origin exclude from your calculation. So the behavior, so because the behavior of the right and the strong black hole and Ion Vito and Garcia are the same uh, beyond the horizon, we may expect the same results. Am I right? Oh, well, if I, if I understand, if I understood, so, uh, in principle, we have no reason to believe that the rise and also an AVG solution have the same uh, behavior outside the, the, the event horizon. Because, because I mean, uh, the AVG solution comes from a nonlinear lateral dynamics that, although satisfies uh, the, 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 uh, the weak field limit with the, with the maxwell theory, so this behavior as the rise and also solution infinity, this is not so closer of the black hole is at infinity. So if you plot, for instance, the behavior of the metric function, which I didn't show here, uh, we can see that the metric function of these solutions is very different inside the black hole and even close to the event horizon. So we have, we, 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 we this is not uh, necessarily true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, thank you. Any question? Okay. If there is no question, I ask the Marco turn off the camera and stop sharing. And thank you. You're welcome. I would like to talk about the second presentation. The title is Correspondence of Gamma Radiation Coming from Gamma Ray Bursts and the magnetars based on the effect of nonlinear vacuum electrodynamics. The presenter is Tursimbek Yernazarov. Okay, please share your screen. Okay. Hello, everybody. I uh, initially, I will uh, welcome all of the uh, participants for, of this conference. And, uh, okay, would, would you please, please? Okay, thank you for the screen. Okay, we can start. I will start. For, uh, then we will start uh, my presentation. Uh, and uh, firstly, I will thank uh, to my professor, Mido Abishev, and uh, my supervisor, uh, Irlan Imratov, uh, for preparation to this conference and for their help in this work. And I am a student or PhD student from Kazakhstan, Almaty, Al-Farabi uh, Kazakh National, National University. Today's my presentation um, um, topic is correspondence of gamma radiation coming from GRBs and magnetars based on the effects of nonlinear vacuum electrodynamics. As you know, uh, this is a, uh, totally is uh, defined by nonlinear ion vacuum and electrodynamics and uh, all of our uh, equations are uh, defined by, um, by our known researchers uh, and uh, we, we will discuss uh, later. And first, my uh, first page of uh, first page of my introduction section is in uh, and this in this uh, introduction section where I will discuss uh, 
the history and the uh, general topic of uh, magnetars. And uh, next section, uh, sky distribution of uh, GRBs, uh, known GRBs, uh, which are taken from these sources, uh, I will discuss later. Uh, in a uh, in catalog of uh, on an ITOF hammer projection in galactic coordinates. And next section is the sky distribution of the 31 magnetars. Uh, on an ITOF hammer projection. In this section, I will discuss about these magnetars, known magnetars, uh, especially by citing uh, the sources I took, we took, I'm sorry. Uh, next section is light propagation scheme, which is uh, totally explains my work. Uh, totally, uh, in other words, totally begins with my, uh, begins or explores my work, uh, my, our, our research work. And the next uh, section is minimum projection distance between magnetars and GRBs, which are taken uh, by analyzing its uh, catalog and uh, table data from their sources. And the final section is lag time for light bent on magnetars, uh, which discuss about the delay, delayed distances of uh, coming GRBs. And in the final section is conclusion, where I will uh, conclude all of this, uh, uh, my research. Uh, topic. Firstly, I will introduce what is a magnetar. A magnetar is a young neutron star which has a strong magnetic field, about uh, 10 power 15 gases, and where this are uh, magnetic, um, this strong uh, magnetic fields uh, are not possible to take in an Earth's uh, case uh, or are not possible to take by human being. And this uh, causes uh, more interest to uh, investigate, to study the uh, magnetars uh, by uh, discovering their properties. Uh, firstly, I will uh, cite that uh, all of um, about magnetars are discussed uh, in Caspi, uh, Bela borrowed of uh, article. Uh, in, in this article, uh, a lot of works were done. And here we uh, you can find a lot of uh, terms and a lot of definitions, a lot of equations about these uh, all magnetars, neutron stars. And magnetars buses are powered uh, by the powerful magnetic uh, field inside of it by taking account into uh, account the process of ability of uh, boosting of core uh, circular magnetic field covered by the possible right reaction in a proton and neutron star coming after a called collapse or supernova. Supernova, which I cited uh, Duncan and Thompson. Historically, um, magnetars were initially presented by covering the name of uh, soft gamma repeaters and anomalous uh, X-ray pulsars. Uh, and uh, there are, and currently, um, there are thir uh, 34 objects that considered to be detected as uh, magnetars. 10 of 10% uh, of them might be young neutron star uh, populations. There are um, 23 confirmed magnetars, eight are found in supernova remnants. Other uh, two uh, magnetars are, are likely identified by supernova remnants. First catalog of uh, observed magnetar models and their co complete uh, uh, 
uh, map were made by Olesen and Caspi in 2014. High scale of the magnetars, uh, null magnetars were detected uh, to be about 20 and uh, 30 parsec. This uh, scalar height confirmed uh, the magnetars to be young. Majority of uh, magnetars from the catalog made by Olesen and Caspi. The um, nonlinear of F vacuum effect is uh, mainly discussed in uh, Denisov works and uh, Jim Young Kim's works. Uh, here uh, they uh, define the equation of uh, declining of light uh, coming uh, passing through the magnetar uh, magnetars magnetosphere. And, uh, here we uh, can find a lot of uh, formula equations uh, of uh, this uh, bifringence process. But uh, however, we are discuss it. Uh, we uh, we studied a lot of works. Uh, we studied equations. We studied a lot of uh, this uh, analysis analysis, and we come to um, to the conclusion that we uh, we should uh, we should uh, confirm confirm the biofringence pr process in the magnetosphere uh, by, um, uh, by the uh, GRB gamma ray uh, gamma rays passing through magnetosphere uh, of magnetars and uh, by uh, analyzing and by studying the their um, project uh, their trajectories and their light curves. And here in this work, uh, we uh, selected uh, 31 magnetars, but uh, mostly of them are uh, 29 of galactic magnetars in the, located in the Milky Way galaxy. galaxy. Uh, two of them, other two of them, uh, are uh, located out of the Milky Way. Uh, and we totally uh, discussed, uh, studied uh, these 31 magnetons. And maximum uh, separation of angle, GRB and magnetic projectile was uh, three and six, uh, seven, uh, 78 degrees. And minimum resol uh, angular resolution uh, was 0.84 uh, degrees. Currently, uh, we are working with this uh, GRBs. Uh, GRB is, you know, that uh, gamma ray buses. Uh, they are uh, they are detected by the Fermi uh, bus. Uh, telescope, uh, American telescope. Uh, we took uh, this data from H-E-A-S-A-R-C catalog, uh, which is a website is uh, here, located here and we downloaded this ca catalog uh, as a FITS file in November 2020 uh, from Fermi's uh, Gamma Ray Burst Monitor, Fermi GRB, GRB. And we are created a sky distribution of this uh, 2,915 uh, GRBs. Uh, here we can uh, locate it. We located here uh, short jarvis and uh, long jarvis. All, all of them are located here in this map. And then we 
studied uh, sky distribution of uh, 31 magnetars uh, taken from MarcGL's online magnetar catalog in November 2020. MarcGL's only online magnetar catalog uh, are, uh, is given in the article of uh, Von Kinlin et al. 2020. Uh, as you see that uh, here in this ITOF um, projection, ITOF hammer projection, uh, two of uh, magnetars are located uh, uh, out of uh, our galaxy, Milky Way. Uh, 29 are located in the equator here. Uh, and we uh, then we discovered, uh, studied these magnetars uh, along with this uh, scheme. This scheme explains uh, the propagation, light propagation uh, of GRB coming to the Earth. GRB, as you know, that uh, comes from uh, the source of uh, infinite source, the infinite source, and comes straightly to the Earth. But when passing the magnetosphere uh, of our magnetars, they will incline. Uh, in, they will incline and they will delay, delay for a, uh, for a period of time, for a period of time. Uh, in, uh, by studying this process, we uh, will um, expect that uh, biofringence of uh, light, pros, uh, biofringence of light in the uh, magnetosphere of uh, magnetic magnetars are um, will be useful for um, confirmation of uh, uh, works uh, done by a lot of researchers uh, as uh, Denisif and uh, other Jin Yang Kings. Uh, which tells that uh, nonlinear effect of non, uh, electrodynamics will decline this uh, uh, light propagation uh, in the atmosphere, uh, magnetosphere of magnetars. And we, um, we are here, we um, define, um, firstly, we take a lot of uh, data uh, as a fits fits catalog, uh, we work it uh, on a Python Python uh, platform, uh, Jupyter platform, program of uh, Python, uh, it, and we analyze it the fits catalog, and we uh, select it. Uh, we select it. Uh, we selected the necessary uh, data, which tells the Jarvis um, name and uh, Magnetar's name and other uh, uh, possible uh, necessary uh, data. And we here in this uh, section, you can see that the minimum uh, projection distance between magnetars and GRBs. Here we can uh, we calculated the uh, all uh, all of this uh, distance between GRBs and magnetars, and we selected only minimum projection distance between GRBs and magnetars. And we uh, you can see that uh, uh, here we uh, we selected. Uh, lag time for uh, light bent on magnetars. Uh, this tells that, uh, in other words, uh, it's a delayed distance. Delayed distance of GRB coming from the infinity to the Earth. Uh, and uh, by analyzing this lag time, we will uh, expect uh, to calculate, uh, to confirm uh, the uh, biofringence uh, process of bioinfringence uh, in the magnetosphere of magnetars. 
And we calculate here uh, by the formula formula equation of uh, delta L ME. ME, it, it's a uh, distance between magneton and earth. And we have, uh, we take this uh, data from the Mark Gilles catalog and uh, cosine al uh, alpha here, cosine alpha is a declination. Uh, no, it's a minimum angle, angular distance, minimum angular distance between uh, this uh, projection. And we are uh, in the conclusion, I will uh, say that uh, uh, this work will uh, confirm the biofringence process uh, on the magnetosphere of magneton uh, by analyzing the uh, GRB data, GRB data uh, coming from the uh, infinity to the earth. And we uh, now we are um, selecting, um, we are selecting only five candidates of black time, uh, five candidates, and we will, uh, we will work on these candidates to analyze their um, light curve uh, and uh, to relate, uh, to take their relationship of their uh, light curves. And uh, I hope that this work uh, we hope that this work will uh, help to confirm the biofringence uh, uh, or uh, in other words, declination of light uh, coming to passing through the magnetosphere of magneton uh, by analyzing the uh, data. Because all of works, all of our researchers works we study are uh, totally uh, studied or totally explained uh, the nonlinear uh, electrodynamics of our uh, vacuum electrodynamics of passing uh, light through uh, magnetosphere. Mm -hmm. And they all are, they all shows that the, the uh, equations are uh, uh, defined by the uh, Einstein's or other uh, equations. And we took this way by, 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 co con by confirming the biofringence process. And I think this is all of my presentations, uh, presentation uh, presentation explanation uh, and uh, I am glad to present here uh, in this uh, uh, big conference like uh, Grossman uh, meeting and thank you all of you uh, this is all of my presentation in a total uh, not long, uh, not short uh, discussion of my presentation. Thank okay. you very much. Uh, I will wait for your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Simbek. Uh, any you. question, Marco, do you have any question? Okay. Yeah. Yes, I, I have, I have uh, there are several models of nonlinear electrodynamics uh, in the mm -hmm. literature especially for, for building, for, for creating black hole solutions, um, regular black hole solutions to be mm -hmm. more precise. So I would like to know how the, these, these physics with gamma ray bursts and by refringence could uh, constrain or, or even roll out some models of nonlinear electrodynamics. Uh, yeah, it's a... Uh... Uh, nice question. Uh, this uh, mm, this is a method, our method. Uh, especially, not, I am not uh, uh, contradicting the nonlinear effect uh, uh, definers, but we we are just uh, studying the uh, passage trajectory 
of GRP uh, gamma ray bursts through the magnetosphere of magnet uh, magnetar, and we are uh, studying their um, we are studying the data uh, detected by the telescopes, and we are we hope that we uh, we hope that we uh, we expect to find the uh, solution or confirmation of uh, of uh, this nonlinear effect of uh, electrodynamics vacuum uh, vacuum electrodynamics. Right. That's, okay. That's the question. Thank you. Yes, uh, it is very good if uh, we can uh, confirm or veto some model of electrodynamics by the data of gamma ray burst. But uh, I think, as you know, there is a nonlinearity parameter in each model, and you can adjust it to avoid the contradiction from the observational data. Okay. Okay, I will. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. To Zimbek and Marco. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you all for attending this meeting. And I finish it. Bye bye.